Hello everyone, in this video we will learn about the bake node that is newly added to Blender 4.1. In the first part of this video, I will show you the working of this bake node. And in the second part of this video, we will use this bake node with the combination of procedural particle system to create this image reveal effect. So let's get start. So here I have made this setup to demonstrate the working of this bake node. So here I'm doing the Boolean operation with this psychosphere onto this plane to create these holes. And you can see that it is taking a lot of time means if I change the seed. So we can bake this operation. So let's add the bake node. And let's plug that here. It has two modes. You can bake the animation or you can bake this geometry as a still. And if we go to the end panel of this node, here you can specify the path for the baking. And if we switch this to animation, you can also specify the custom range. Otherwise, it's going to use this time range for the baking. Okay. Right now, we can't bake this because this option is gray. The reason for is that first we have to uh, save our blend file only then this node going to work okay now this file is saved and we can see that this option is visible and now we can bake this so when we bake this you can see that it is displaying the frame on which frame we have baked this geometry okay now this is real time means if we do a uh, Another operation, let's say set position node. You can see that it is real time. And we can also bake the animation. So let me first decrease the subdivision so that it take less time for the baking. And also I'm going to make this time range short. So here we're going to add the time frame so that we have a different animation for this seed and now we can bake this now you can see that it is in real time and we can do these operations this is really useful note uh, we can use that when we have a very complex animation or we have a geometry that uh, cause a lot of calculations so we can uh, bake that so now let's use this bake node with the procedural particle system to create this image reveal effect. You can add the particle system from the asset browser if you have assigned the extra node as asset library in the blender preference. So here you have to assign this as asset library. Then you can easily add the particle system from the asset browser. So go to the case extra nodes, then the particle and from here you can just drag this particle system into your blend file so we have this a particle system or particle system modifier so for this effect we don't need these object so let's delete them and in the particle system we also don't need this thing we don't need these forces okay in this case we're going to use a plane a square plane for the emitter because in the end we're going to use a square image to project that onto the particles using the big node. Okay. So we have this plane. So let's rename this as emitter. And then we can select that from this modifier panel. So this is our emitter object. In the particle system, first we have to change the emission range. And we're going to emit the particles for 30 frames. And in the emitter, we can disable this because our emitter is not animated. And we can also decrease this particle density, maybe around 250 for the starting. Then we can later change this. Okay. And we can also increase the lifetime and decrease the size around 0.05. In the output side, uh, we can delete this and add the icosphere. Let's increase the subdivision to 2. 
and we also need to add the set smooth node set shade smooth node so that we have a smooth these icospheres let me disable these things and now we're going to work on the forces so let's change this to 3 and this to 0 0.01001 0 .001, and this is round 3 okay let me hide this emitter object the first thing is we have to contain these particles in a box so we're going to use this cube let's change this to a wireframe change this to fire and also we can disable these on the rendering option for this box and let's bring this box here change this to relative and we're going to use this volume option let's plug that into this enable this and we're going to use this inside option because we want to keep these particles inside and we can also enable them avoid and avoid by size okay now you can see that they are vibrating or jiggling at the these edges or face of this cube because this node is uh, forcefully containing these particles uh, but we can uh, collide these particles with the walls using the collision force node so let's add that here and connect this to geometry and this as our collision surface and for the side we're going to use the back side or the inside of this cube because the particles are inside of this cube and for the particle option we're going to use void by size we're going to also add a small amount of friction and also we're going to decrease the bounds now let's see now they are not vibrating they are properly colliding with the cube next we're going to add the drag force so let's add the drag force and we're going to use point two strength and a linear drag i think point one point is fine yeah next we're going to add the particle collision force node to avoid this overlapping of these particles so let's add that it's basically a particle particle collision and if we rerun this we have to change this option avoid by size not by this distance see now they are not overlapping they are colliding with each other in the starting we can see that they have a very strong force that's why they have very a uh, strong motion here uh, we can fix that using the age factor so let's duplicate this particle info node and here we're going to use this age based factor and the range of this factor is 0 to 1 and we're going to make this from 0 to 0.1 and when this factor is 0 the force is 0 and when this factor become 0.2 the strength become uh, 1 so let's see that you can see that they are slowly uh, colliding with each other to avoid on this radius or the overlap now let's increase the number of particles so we have increased the density of these particles and let's see so let's do this for 120 frame and another thing we can do is that in the end we can slow down the animation or the simulation of these particles by animating this timestamp okay 
so let's add the map range node and here we're going to add the frame the time frame and we're going to animate this from 90 frame to the last frame 120 and from this time step which is the current time step to a really small time step and you will see that in the end these particle move slowly or the simulation become slower see it's like us these particles are settling into a configuration so now uh, we are, are done with this part this simulation part of these particles now we're going to do the projection with the bake node okay so let me also close this thing and we can also delete this node because we don't want to add any velocity to these particles or the angular velocity so here we're going to add the bake node so let's add the bake node and we're going to do this for the animation and let's see that see it is a real time and after that we can change anything it is not going to affect the simulation because we have baked that if we increase on the subdivisions you can see that it is not affecting the simulation it is in real time and after that we're going to duplicate this node and connect this to this and we're going to bake the still frame and for the projection we're going to use the last frame for the projection so we're going to bake this at the end of this frame range which is 120 so now we have this still frame see it is not changing and this thing is changing so now we have to first calculate the color from the image onto this still frame and then we are going to transfer that to this animated particles so let's add the image texture and in this case we are going to use the position of the particles because we don't have a UV uh, that's why we're going to use the position of the particles uh, for the projection of this image however you can also use the UVs of this emitter object for the projection but in this example we're going to use the position of the particle so let's add the image we're going to use this square image and if we view this we have these four copies of this image uh, the reason for is that because this node is using the only post -E quadrant of this space but we have four of them that's why we have these four copies uh, we can fix this by remapping this position so first we're going to add the vector scale node then we have to decrease the scale by 0.5 and after that we have to shift this or offset this position by 0.5 along the x axis and y axis. Now we have this complete image, and here you can see that it is zooming in, zooming out from the center of this scene or the world center. Keep in mind that these values will change if you change the position of these particles, means away from the world center. Okay. Now we have this uh, proper color for this still frame and now we can transfer this color from the still frame onto this animated one using the sample index node and change this to color connect this to this and here we're going to use the index node. Now you may ask why we are using the index or why we can use the index node here because we have the same number of particles or we can say we have the same particles here they are animated and here they are still 
so we can use the index node to transfer the data from the still to the animated one okay so here this to the animated see and we can store this information as a color attribute and we have this color attribute for the particle okay so now let's go to the shading by default on uh, this particle come with this uh, setup it has particle info node for the material and particle action node for the material okay so here we going to use this color for the emission or we can use the principal shader okay maybe around 0.35 yeah now you can see if you go to the first frame we have this see and from the side it will look like this because we have baked the simulation you can easily change the image to a different image uh, let's use this one uh, we have this but you can see that it is slightly um, spread along the x-axis uh, we can fix that by using the multiply node here change this to multiply type here one and here we can slowly decrease the x-axis see you can also make this negative to switch the direction okay and if uh, you want to rotate that you can also add the vector or rotate node to rotate on the image you can do that see if you want to do this from the center you can use this thing The position of the node is uh, really important okay so now we have the simulation with this image and this is the overall setup first we have did the simulation for the particle and then we did the transformation from the still frame to the animated one uh, for the color information from this image and then we do the scattering of the object onto the particles and this is the material uh, for this you can play with this material or the lighting to create amazing render with this so this is it about uh, the setup now i will break down one of my project file where i use a different shape uh, for this container so in this case i used this circle to contain these particles like in this disk and the rest of the setup is same and i have also added a small amount of gravity for these particles and here i have also rotated them along the x-axis so that they are facing the y-axis for the projection of this image so this is the material for this so i hope you learn something uh, from this video so if you like then please like and share the video and subscribe to my channel for more updates you can get this project file and all my other project files and presets from my patreon page so thank you for watching see you in the next video happy noting bye